So we need to plug all the power in. Power for the mixer plugs in here. There's no power switch on the mixer. It will turn on immediately and the blue LED shows you that there's power to the unit. The speakers do have an on off switch there. So they need to be in the on position. Make sure the red light is on. There's also a volume control here, which is the overall volume. We have a volume control on the mixing desk, which we'll show you in a minute, but this one should be set around a midway point. This allows you to set the maximum volume of the speakers or turn the maximum volume down a little bit. There's also a mic, bass and treble. We don't use the microphone one at all. Bass and treble usually will be set center, but it's up to you if you want a bit more bass, you can always turn it up. Okay, so the mixing desk is on, the speakers are on. The touch screen is also on. Uh, see a little orange light there to indicate that there's power to the touchscreen. To power on the computer, just push and hold the button for a couple of seconds. Blue light comes on to indicate it's starting to boot up. It is a standard Windows PC, so it'll take a few seconds to boot up, just like any Windows PC. Okay, once the computer's started, we, a piece of software called Boot Stuff will run. Its job is to check that everything's there, make sure the sound card is there, make sure that the, um, all the data is there before starting the Myriad Playout software automatically. After a few seconds, Myriad will start up and uh, we'll be ready to actually show you how to use the system. Okay, we're going to spend just a few minutes showing you the basics of Myriad. There is a whole series of video tutorials that are available on our website that you can watch to give you far more detail about Myriad. But right now we're just going to spend five minutes going through the basics so you can get started. So Myriad is divided up into four main areas. The audio wall, which is your library of content, music, jingles, recordings, interviews, whatever you put onto the system. The instant carts, which can be considered to be shortcuts to your favorite carts, hotkeys that you can just fire off as and when you need to. The library tab, which allows you to browse the content via category. And then the log tab, which allows you to take a um, playlist that you've created and actually deliver them live on air. So the basics of the audio wall. You have different places on the audio wall. So our jingles are on cart number one. Promos are on cart 2000, and our music starts on cart 3000. When you get your system, there'll be a little bit of audio on there just for testing purposes, but essentially it'll be empty, leaving you to add your own content. We then have four cart players along the bottom here, which relate to four channels on the mixing desk. Here it's one, two, three, and four. You may remember the colored cables we plugged in earlier. Those also relate to the, to the mixing, to the cart players. So in the simplest thing, if we want to play Katy Perry, we pick it up, we drag it into the green channel. It's now ready to play. We can press the play button. Katy Perry starts playing. And this will come up on Myriad 1 on the mixer. So we can control the volume. Katy Perry just by fading the slide, slide it up and down. Okay, if you drag a cart into a cart player with an intro, the intro is displayed here, 10 seconds here. When we drop into the cart player, when we press play, we have a countdown which tells us when the vocals are going to kick in. We call this an intro. And this is how we would speak into the microphone just here. And when we stop talking, the vocals will come in. When you do turn a microphone on, the speakers do automatically turn off so that you don't get any feedback. If you're listening with your headphones, you'll still be able to hear the song playing. So the cart comes towards an end get an indicator at 10 seconds, you can drag in the next item you want to play, press play, and congratulations you're a radio DJ. To record, you just press on the record button here, it starts recording, so if I want to record my voice, get the microphone, open the microphone, start speaking, you can see it's recording here, so here we would record whatever we wanted to, an interview, or whatever it is we were recording. When we want to finish, press the button again, say, do you want to save it? We say yes. Say, do you want to jump to that cart? We say yes. Here's our recording. We could also edit it. And there's our recording for editing. But editing is covered in detail in the full tutorial videos for Myriad. Next, we're going to look at instant carts. These are hotkeys to your favorite carts. So I could create a new instant cart set, right click, add set, call this one. School radio, go back to the audio wall, drag an item I want to play onto the instant cart set, release it. Now when I press number one on the keyboard, it'll play it out. 
Hot FM. Next, I'm going to show you a very quick way of creating a playlist and then to do it, uh, do what we call a live assisted show. To create a playlist, go to the view, display pad. This opens up what we call the pad, which is basically like a manual playlist creator, just like you would create a playlist in iTunes or Windows Media. I can drag anything I want into the playlist. So I can drag some songs, I can drag some jingles. I could go to my library tab, go into a particular category, drag items in. Or I could even tell the system to fill based on criteria. So you go to the instant track button, Say so you want to be asked what criteria to hit. Say so I want mostly pop, a little bit of rock, no R&B, no dance. And I'd like 60 minutes of content. And there we go, that's that show made. So next I'm gonna show you how we would actually use this in a live assist mode. And to do this, we wanna transfer what's on the pad here onto the log. So you click on this button here, send the list to the scheduled log. It will then say what hour do you want to put it into? So I'm going to put it into the three o'clock hour. So if I click on the log button now, you can see what we put here is now listed on here. We can change the order just by picking stuff up and dropping it. We can go to the audio wall, we can pick up something and we can drag across, and drop it into the log. We can remove items from the log by just clicking on the icon on the left hand side and we can restore them by clicking again and if we want to actually do a live assisted show just push the power button up here it queues up the first item ready to play it says go it's queued up onto into channel one which will be on the myriad one fader here when we're ready we just press go it starts the next item you can see the intro going across here it's then going to play that jingle and then on to the next track if we want to talk at the end of this track, we just click on the green circle to change it to a red square. Red square is a stop, green circle is a go. So in this case, we come to the end of the track. I did that by right clicking on the progress bar. Grab my microphone, put the mic one fader up, introduce my next track, which is going to be Eric Prids with banjo. And when I'm ready, press the go button. Next item starts. Okay, there's a lot more resources about using Mirad on our website. There's um, several hours of tutorial videos. It's a very in-depth system. Hopefully you've seen how easy it is to play some music and to create a quick playlist. As we've already discussed, you've got two microphone channels which turn the speakers off whenever you open them up. That's why you have to wear your headphones so that you can actually hear what's going on. Four Myriad playback channels, which uh, correspond to the four color-coded channels on the Myriad playout system. We'll not be using these faders at all. However, if you wish to plug additional equipment in, then you can do. There's a vast array of buttons and knobs on the top here, which really we want to um, not fiddle with. The important things are, we want to have the channels turned on, the ch channels off, doesn't matter if you put the fader up, nothing will go out on air. So make sure that we have green lights across the board on the on channels. Also really important, up here on the stereo ones, for your first three myriads, they need to be on ST1, ST3, and ST5. That's because that's what we're plugged into, ST1, ST3, ST5. Okay, sometimes you'll want to turn a particular channel up or down. You could do it with the faders, but normally what we like to do is put the faders right to the top. So if we needed to turn one of the guest microphones down, for example, we'd be using the gain on the top here to just turn it down. So this knob here determines how loud the thing will be when the fader is at the top of its travel. When you're doing the same thing on the stereo channels, you've got ST1, ST3, and ST5. ST7 is this one here. So you control the gain with those. Don't worry about the rest of the knobs here. We're not worried about them for now. They want to be set black ones want to be set to zero. All the rest of the blue ones really want to be set central. The pink ones want to be set, the pan and balance ones want to be set central. Another important thing is the audition buttons here need to be off with no light on them. When you push a button, it changes the channel from going to the main output 
sort of addition output, which we're not worried about for now, but just make sure that all the red lights are off. Sometimes what you want to do is listen to a piece of audio without it being broadcast on air. Under normal circumstances, if you take a piece of audio and you drop it into a cart player and press play, if the fade is up, it will be broadcast on your recording or on your live stream. So let's say we wanted to listen to that, to that again, but not have it broadcast on air. We pull the fader down, we press the pre-fade button, the little orange light comes on, PFL stands for pre-fade level, and um, a little orange button comes on. We drag it into the correct cart player on a cart player, and we listen to it. So now that we can hear it through the speakers, but it's not actually being broadcast. When we're happy with that, we turn the pre-fade off, put the fader back up again so it's ready to broadcast. Final couple of things, all this stuff over here, really we don't need to worry about too much. The important ones are the CRM speakers. This is what controls the volume of the speakers in the studio. And also the CRM headphones and the guest headphones. These control both the CRM and the guest headphones so that you can control how loud it is in your headphones. Just as a warning, um, headphones go pretty loud. So make sure before you use the system, always make sure that the volume is at zero and then turn it up to a comfortable level. Never just put the headphones on and play some music in case someone has left it at full volume because you could damage your hearing. So it's always best to check that they're on zero, then turn them up. We ignore these three here, but this one here, the main output is pretty important. If that's down, you're not broadcasting anything. So make sure that's at the top whenever you want to be broadcasting or recording. Final thing is the VU bars here, which show you how loud Piece of, a piece of audio is, no, so when you're no, playing it, you want to be getting up to FM around the top of the greens. You don't want to be in the yellows and certainly not in the reds. So that's it for the starter package. There's loads more resources on our website, loads of tutorial videos about Myriad. There's also tutorials and resources to help you get started using School Radio to do things like plays, news programs, interviews, whatever you can imagine. So. Best of luck with it and I hope you have a great fun.